In October 2022, at a workshop in Selby, Central Johannesburg, near Faraday Taxi Rank, at a workshop belonging to Mike Kumalo, there was a foul smell. His son, Fisom Kwananzi, a 21-year-old student, told him that it was probably a dead cat somewhere in the workshop. However, the smell got so bad that Michael Kingsley Damien, who was responsible for the maintenance of the building, began to investigate. He looked inside the bins that were outside and discovered a dead female body. He was shocked and called Mike, who called the police. The police then set up a crime scene and took DNA samples and took the body away. The police then gave them clearance to clean the premises after taking the body. When they started cleaning, they realized that the drainage was blocked and they tried to unblock it. They then went to the chimney to clean it and they saw flies circling around. And after close inspection, they found another decomposed female body. They called the police again who came with the forensics team and searched the entire premises for more bodies with the caretaker and the security guards. They believed that there were more bodies at the premises. It was at this point that one of the security guards that was searching the area realized that the dustbin that had been missing in the workshop was outside and went over to investigate. But before he got to the dustbin, he saw a white plastic and realized that in the white plastic, there was another dead body. He then alerted the police that he had discovered another body. And when he went over to the dustbin, he used a stick to open the bin and he found another fourth body hidden inside. While they were still in shock, they found the fifth body in a scrap vehicle in the backyard. They had noticed that there were a lot of dead flies on the driver's side of this scrap vehicle. And when they opened it, that's when they realized there was a dead body inside. Behind the van, there was a truck and they noticed a small lock. They broke it open and found the sixth body, which was inside another dustbin. Mike was very concerned because this was an inside job clearly. The places where the bodies were discovered were rarely visited and no outsider had access to these. The police identified the victims as Joyce Moyo, Nyaraichi Wota, Patricia Magaisa and other three women who were also Zimbabwean. One of the women had been fatally shot in the head while the remaining five were allegedly choked to death according to the police. Two of the victims were said to have been pregnant at the time of their death. A preliminary investigation led the police to Mike's 21-year-old son. It is believed that on the 2nd of October 2022, he was seen with the deceased woman. She was never seen again until her body was discovered at the warehouse. The clothes that she was wearing matched the description of one of the missing persons that had been reported at the time. The state alleged that Mkwananzi had raped and killed the six sex workers that he collected from Johannesburg CBD between April and October of 2022. He admitted to killing them, but denied raping them. He first admitted to at least six of the murders in a recorded confession to his father, Mike Kumalo, who was also a witness for the state. A trial within a trial is currently underway at the High Court in Johannesburg, sitting in Palm Ridge Magistrate Court to determine the admissibility of the alleged confession into a main trial. The defense argues that Mukwananzi's confession was not voluntary and that he was violated. That's why he was forced to make a confession. The prosecution, on the other hand, maintains that Mukwananzi's confession was freely and willingly given and that it was corroborated by other evidence, such as forensic analysis, cell phone records, and eyewitness identification. But what drove Mkwananzi to commit these heinous crimes? And what is the truth behind his confession? What will be the outcome of his trial? Will these women receive justice? If he had not been stopped, would he have continued with his murders? These are questions that no one can answer except Mkwananzi.